the expectation that he comes straight back in this week? Yeah, look, Tex will play this week. Um, he's obviously our most experienced forward um, and brings a lot to our forward group. So understanding he's missed a, a fair bit of footy, but um, the way that he's, he's trained um, and his experience will help complement our mix, we hope. Oh, it was certainly discussed at match committee level, and in the end, we decided that yeah, it's text to text to play this week um, helps out with our our forward mix, our experience ahead of the ball, um, and like I guess our experience across the entire group as well. So we'll back him in, not having done, uh, not having any match fitness to date, but obviously he's been in the system for for a long time now, and we're back in that experience to help him. And we might try and manage him to an extent on the weekend, but I'm uh, looking forward to having him back ahead of the ball for us. Yeah, it'll be Darcy that makes way for, for Tex this week. Um, and he's been playing some important roles for us and doing, doing some really important things ahead of the ball for us. Uh, but as you said, there was some, um, in particular, Lockie Gallant and Elliot Himmelberg's form last weekend was, um, was I guess, at a, at a higher level in, in certain areas. So um, he's the one to miss out this week and make way for Tex. Um, so he, he'll be really clear on what he goes back and works on at, at SANFL level. And I'm sure he'll be back up at senior level sooner rather than later. That, that competition for spots, though, with obviously Elliot and, and Lockie playing the roles that they played last weekend is, is what we're searching for. Um, and it was great to see Riley Filthorpe as well play um, a really solid game in the SNFL. So um, it's a good position for, for our key forwards to be heading into. Oh, there's definitely elements of his role around impacting on game, um, as well as um, he, he plays some different roles outside of that, whether it be in, in Tex's absence or whether it be with Tex in the side. Um, his role does subtly change within that. Um, and again, I'm not going to disclose exactly what, he, what it is he needs to work on, I mean, because there's enough conversation around him in this state as it is. Um, but um, he understands that he's still a really important aspect of us moving forward, and he's, he's done some really positive signs for us this year. Um, Fortunately, Tex comes back in this week, and the other two key forwards last week played really uh, impactful games for us. So um, he's the one to miss out this week, but hopefully it's not too far away before we have that conversation along with Riley Thilthorpe in the coming weeks. How do you think the more people? It's an unbelievable embarrassment for Richards to have a bloke who's probably one of the best set shots going around. Thilthorpe is unbelievable around the place, and then Taylor. Yeah, it's, it's actually. I actually find that quite entertaining to hear it's an embarrassment of riches. A week ago it wasn't, uh, and all of a sudden this week it is off the back of one performance. So um, we, I think we've been fairly consistent with our messaging all along to say that we're still working towards our best mix and, and backing in guys at AFL level. So um, to their credit on the weekend, um, Elliot and, and Lockie were able to take their opportunities um, and have... And more so put forward the form that we've seen at, at training at times and the belief that we have in them. So they do complement our system at the moment um, and it's going to be you know, really pleasing signs for the footy club to have, hopefully, that really so solid selection pressure from beneath pushing us to make decisions each week, each week around Phil Thorpe, Fogarty, Himmelberg, Gallant, Walker, you know, the list goes on, McAdam, etc. So um, that mix we're still working through and this week Tex gets the nod to come in with Himmelberg and, uh, and Glant. Uh, we're, we're talking at SNFL or talking uh, AFL? It's something we explored last year. Um, we haven't discussed around doing that as much this year. So um, for now, it'll be working on his forward craft, but won't never say never to that. Uh, Rory as well, he looked okay. Yep, Sloan, he got through training today. Um, Again, we haven't fully discussed where things are at and how he's pulled up, but um, it looks like to get, he got through training well today, so we'll have a discussion around what that looks like, but Skipper's available, Skipper plays, so we'll have that chat later today around what the rest of the side and his role looks like. Yeah, he moved well today out of training, so I expect him to be available to play this week. Um, and again, we'll have the, the final chats around selection, but it was good to see him moving around out there and, you know, we're lucky and fortunate at the moment to have a, a healthy list, so it's going to mean some competition for spots and some guys are going to miss out. Um, and hopefully, from what our fans would have seen last week in the, 
in the SNFL uh, means we've got a, a fairly strong team to work with. So it means that guys can play their roles, the roles we'll expect of them at AFL level, and hopefully then they can um, press for selection. Bill thought he was pretty good in that South yep. Did he, Is he half a chance or does he still need to keep developing? Yeah, again, we'll, we'll have further chats. I'd say it's, it's pretty hard for him this week based on Tex coming in and, and the other two key forwards playing really well last week, but some really pleasing signs from him you know, launching at the footy, running freely around the ground, um, and even at training today he did some, some really positive things. Um, so we're really liking where he's at you know, uh, form-wise, his headspace, and hopefully in the coming weeks he just continues to develop and, and put that pressure on us as match community to get him back in, and um, we then have the issue of, of what that looks like at AFL level. You know better than most how a few days after a showdown can affect you in the good and the bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we had um, we had three days. Or the players had three days off. Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So we didn't really see each other. Obviously, we got around the, the women's team on the Saturday, which which was great, and all the best to them this weekend. Hopefully, they can uh, they can get it done for the footy club. Um, but yeah, we had three days away. So I guess by the time we came in Monday, uh, Tuesday, sorry, it was um, emotion out of the game had, had dissipated. We had a chance to move on and say a lot of things we did really well. Some things we need to improve on and. It was really reviewed in balance with you know, whether we won, lost or drew, so um, we've moved on pretty quickly and, and today we, uh, we address the Bombers going into Sunday. So ideally, you don't want to win it like that each week. What are the no. games you did well against all that you've taken? Yeah. Sunday? I'll win it like that every week. I'm happy to win every week regardless whether it's after the siren or you know, whatever, so whatever it takes. Sure. But some of the things we did really well was um, our ability to stay, stay in the fight. I think um, you know, we, we didn't play the, the prettiest of brands, um, which to be honest is probably when we play our, our best footy, is just that that um, fight around the footy, um, relentless nature with our pressure, um, winning contests at the footy, ahead of the footy, and being really strong behind it. So we, we saw aspects of our system, and Nixie spoke a lot around our system in the week leading in, as well as guys executing their specific roles, and it's funny when you get a, a collective buy into that, that you get um, the result more so in your favour, more of the time. So we're lucky that it went our way in the end. Um, so it was, it was a, a fitting reward for a group that's, that's been hanging in there. We've been playing some pretty solid footy without being outstanding, but you need, uh, you need the result to go your way every now and again just to, to reinforce those behaviours. Yeah, look, they've, um, they've certainly been wanting to be playing some really strong footy at, at certain times as well. And despite where they sit at the moment, I mean, they've played... Geelong, Brisbane, and uh, gone blank on the weekend. Melbourne. So three, uh, you'd think, of the the best teams going around this year. So we're not under no illusions that uh, you know they've had a, a pretty tough run at the moment, and we've scouted them at their best uh, at Marvel Stadium. They like to certainly bring that that heat um, behind the ball and look to run and carry through you. Um, and Marvel certainly promotes that sort of footy. So. We got taught a really harsh lesson by them last year at Marvel Stadium, so we're looking to to respond from that. Even though it was last year, they they certainly embarrassed us as there, and we, we do remember that. So it's a matter of hopefully um, us learning from that what they brought there because they haven't changed a whole lot from then, and uh, hopefully we can be really sound defensively. Yeah, I haven't seen him since uh, since the end of training and. Texas, you know, his nature is he's always up and about and he's a, he's a fair barometer for the group in terms of our, our energy. Um, so he'll, he'll certainly be excited to, to get back out there. I know he's been itching to play a game of footy at any level for the last probably, I reckon, few months um, and he hasn't been able to do so. So he'll, he'll, uh, he'll be ready to, ready to go come Sunday. He may be a bit rusty um, and he may, may be uh, blowing a fair bit, but um, we'll back in his experience and, and the way that we manage him to hopefully help out the guys ahead of the ball for us. Yep. The way you move the ball is a big chest lead yep. up. How does he change the way you, uh, the way you play? Yeah, he, do, he doesn't change our system um, ahead of the ball. The, the way that James Riley and, and Nixie coach, the way that our forwards play is, is very system-based. Um, so he comes in and plays his role within that system, um, understanding that he moves slightly differently to the way an Elliot Himmelberg does, to, to Lockie Gallant, to Riley Philthorpe. So that's where the chemistry of connection between mids, backs, forwards comes in. Um, but he doesn't change our system. Um, he does certainly add a, a different, um, or complements our experience ahead of the ball, which has been lacking probably the last few weeks through no fault of our own. Um, 
So he, uh, he, he adds to that, but the system might change. Yeah, he, he does. Yeah, he's a past skipper of the club. He's leading goal kicker in the, kicker in the club's history and um, has an aura about him that, that will help us experience-wise and he no doubt takes the number one defender from the opposition team too, which helps out uh, Himmelberg and Gallant um, and the rest of the, the small forwards around him. So, yeah, it does help. I think we saw even on the weekend with Lockie Murphy coming in. Um, he's a guy who adds some experience to, to our small forwards and he played a really important role for us and helped helped our small forwards as well. So experience does matter. How is he? Yeah, he, um, he's still pretty sore. Um, he did bits and pieces of training today, so we'll assess how he pulls up post-training, but we hope that he's, he's available come the end of the week because he was pretty important for us around the stoppage on the weekend, ahead of the ball, and as we know, at the end of the game too, really important. So hopefully he's OK. He's still pretty sore, though.